Hey guys, happy to be here today. Uh, my name is Jessica Henry and I'm out here going to be doing a little bit of plein air and um, it's just really happy to be out here. I'm in the woods and it was peaceful. We've got some music. The, there's a house that's playing so um, it's okay. It'll be fine. Um, so I wanted to show you what I'm doing. Um, so I've had a lot of questions lately about materials and so I thought that I would show you uh, just to start out with today what I'm painting on. Um, hey guys, happy to see you. Uh, so anyway, uh, what I have here is, um, this is my setup, and I use a James Coulter uh, setup here. Hey guys, let's see, I'm, you know, I think I'm going to leave the camera there for just now and just point out that this is the top part of the easel, and it comes, it comes off like this, and so you can just carry that home. And, um, and then the bottom part here, I've got it kind of loaded right now, but you can take this off and close it up and then it's just the tripod. So that is my um, setup. And then I just bring my regular um, brushes and colors. Um, here, I'll show you up close. Bring this. Hey guys, good to see you. So um, I'll lean it down a little bit. You can see my palette and my colors. Not really. I like that. Okay, here we go. So the colors I normally use, um, and this is whether I'm plein air painting or even in the studio, I might add a few little things here and there. Um, I have my titanium white, uh, yellow, excuse me, cadmium yellow pale, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and um, some phthalo green. So that's what I use uh, for colors. Then I just have my Gamsol and um, all my linseed oil, and I just keep them in little containers. For my Gamsol, I use this one of these little contraptions, if you have these. Um, don't buy the cheap ones because uh, inside here there's a little basket. And this, if you get the cheap ones, it's like a cheese grater on your brush and it will eat away your bristles. So, and then all the paint or the turpentine just collects down there, the Gamsol, whatever. And um, it has a rubber gasket on the inside of the lid, so you just want to make sure that that's always uh, flat when you close it otherwise it leaks all over your bag okay so I'm here today and um, I've had some questions then about materials so uh, who was it Karen had asked what I paint on for linen and I use Claussen's double oil primed uh, linen this is one of the panels that I made using that linen and I glued that down to um, just this is eighth inch masonite and I don't do um, smaller than, hey Norm, <laughs> good, it's, it's really beautiful here. Um, I don't do smaller than eighth inch when I go um, this size. If I were to make this a little bit bigger, then I would go quarter inch. But, um, so I glue it down with neutral pH adhesive glue, and it's, that's archivally sound, and that's how I make my panels. But if you don't want to make those and just want the linen, you can stretch it. It's um, really good quality Belgian linen. I'm going to take this off because it's like 70 degrees here today. Uh, okay, so then I had some other questions about, um, let's see, the, well, the materials, and then um, Norm, you had asked some questions about um, technique, so I thought that I would address some um, technical issues today while I'm painting. Uh, somebody had asked also how I do that technique um, on my Facebook page, that horse I just did. It has, I kind of rubbed it out and painted. Um, just pushing and pulling that way with the turpentine. And so I thought that I would show how I do that in a plein air. Before I jump into this, uh, I did some studies. I've been out here a couple hours, it's so beautiful today. And um, I wanna show you what I did and how I would sort of attack something a little more complicated like a forest scene. So I will come and I will just spend some quiet time in the woods and just, I'm enjoying it, it's peaceful short of the neighbor's music. <laughs> um, but I like to do these little sketches. So if you can kind of see that, maybe if I held it like this, and just, just to take a branch that looks interesting and study the way it angles and turns and how the light hits and falls. And you just really get an up close and personal uh, understanding of the way that trees grow and how they are wider at the base. And they, the light moves across the trunk and they get smaller and more refined as they reach up. Also, um, that's another thing I want to talk about too, is how the light moves on the trunk and where it's most intense and, um, and how it fades. 
it's just the trees are so beautiful and the, um, the branches as they go I see a lot of people do this and I've been guilty of it myself too you have your your dark paint on your brush and you're painting the little branches and as they move over into the air and the Sun and the sky they continue you continue with the same value the dark value and you can't you got to switch to a lighter value because the light will wrap around an object making it softer and lighter so like if you hold the brush up to the sky just the stick or whatever you'll see it, it the light does seem to wrap around it and um, hey Thomas hey guys good to see you so uh, when you're painting the little tiny sticks and twigs as they go into the sunlight you have to go with the lighter value and just softer squint down you hardly ever see them so just kind of like little shh, 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 and I'll get into some of that in here uh, so then um, I did some close-up studies of just tree trunks and uh, this is one I did while I was sitting out here I don't know if you can see it hey David um, glad to have you guys here this one I just it's so good to just take and study just some of the lighting and the sh shading and where it hits on um, just little things like this little intimate studies these are a lot of fun to do uh, and then I have another one here of that same branch that I did on my sketch I thought that this was really interesting I just did this a few minutes ago and um, you, you study and you break it down into all these little subtle little angles and where the light is strong and how this is like an elbow that comes out at you to try to really play with that and get that feature there and the sticks and twigs and uh, I'll show you how I just kind of twirl and s squiggle those lines and then um, before I get going on this I did do a real simple um, I took an 11 by 14 and kind of started it I thought at one point in this video that I would pull this one up and show you a little bit more how I would take it a little further so I will start on this one showing you how I do that push and pull that rubbing out method and then I will switch to this painting and just show you how I might finish this I only have like um, maybe 40 minutes into this kind of laying down masses and playing with this composition okay so that's my plan for today thank you guys for joining and um, yeah I'm glad to have you with too Edwin it is gorgeous here and it's warm I'm so happy to be in a t-shirt <laughs> uh, so let me pull you a little bit closer here and um, see what we can come up with so this is my view over here and I was trying to play with whatever kind of cluster of trees that might be a real interesting feature and I think I'm gonna go with um, if you can see those where am I pointing to those right there and um, just I'll do a quick sketch with my paint on here and then um, show you. get going quit talking <laughs> so if I break into dance it's because I'm enjoying the neighbor's music it's kind of fun <laughs> I thought, you know, one thing these videos need is some music. <laughs> so here we go. All right, getting into this. Um, another thing, if you're just starting out plein airing, you want to make sure that your lighting is consistent on, the, on your canvas and your palette. And it's a little bit difficult to do that sometimes, um, especially when I'm on live because the um, connection's always touch and go. So I'm kind of just stuck here, but if you have that freedom, wherever you are, you can set up an umbrella. Ideally is a light shade, not dark shadow, but a light shade to have both of these in the same consistency. Right now you can see my palette, if I can angle this down, is in really bright light and this is in shade. So it's going to be a problem, but um, you know, since I'm only doing this like a tonal wash, I'm not that worried about it because I'm not going to be playing with uh, fine tuning color. All right, so here we go. I hope everybody's um, got a lot of fun plans this weekend. I'm thinking about how beautiful it is and what I'm going to do. Uh, when I when I start a painting like this, obviously it's just a study, so I'm going to still lay in a bit of a composition, kind of in keeping with the little one that I just showed you. Uh, I, I like this path, how it kind of curves around. I don't want this little study here to be all about the path since really all I'm doing is just going to show you on this canvas um, how to how to do um, that rubbing out method. Are, am I streaming on my iPhone? Yes. I need to find a way to... <laughs> um, I have another tripod and you can go to Best Buy and get the little clampy things 
and it's like 15 bucks to get the clamp and you just screw it into your tripod and you're all set. So just laying this in, thinking about these trees here. And at this point, I'm just using the Gamsol and um, just ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Morning, Rick. Nice to see you guys, Robert. You see you. Um, what I'm gonna do here with this value behind all this is just do a really soft light, um, just a tone on it so that I can kind of push that in the back. Keeping it really simple. And I'm thinking about um, sort of dividing the canvas into thirds a little bit. Hi, Valerie, good to see you. Um, anyway, I'm gonna try really hard to um, catch your comments, but I do wanna try to get this going here. Um, and see what we've got. <laughs> oh, good, Robert, you're having your lunch. Okay. All right, so I'm kind of, I'm content with this just as a basic value mass. It's, to me, it's the correct value when I look over there and see it. Hey, Allie. All right. Oh, and I wanted to tell you too, if you don't want to see the comments, just swipe them off to the right and they will go away. So that is, I'm, I'm fine with that. And um, if you're just joining, I, I mentioned that um, <laughs> I've got the neighbor over here playing music, so it's kind of fun. <laughs> Am I always this happy while painting? Painting makes me happy, yes. Uh, hey, Allie. Yeah, um, I'm this happy painting and riding horse. This <laughs> riding. I think everybody has their one thing that they do that they just really come alive. And that's what I do here. Um, I just pulled out a little bit darker value here because I squint and I, I want to just kind of play with that a little. Getting that in. Got a little bit darker shadows as they come down on the trail here. And there's a big bundle of um, weeds and bushes and stuff over here. <laughs> it's good to see you guys. It's a little bit lighter value too, so I kind of want to keep this mostly the color that is on the canvas already. I toned these canvases this morning. Um, <laughs> painting and riding. Too bad we couldn't figure out a way to ride and paint. <laughs> the challenge has been presented. Um, okay, so I was saying that I toned these canvases this morning and um, this is that linen and it is toned with just uh, burnt sienna and uh, <laughs> Um, thank you, Linda. Burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, and I just kept it really thin and really just soft, kind of a neutral value. Like that. Thinking about framing in the path a little bit in here. Uh, I'll show you what I did on that other painting when I get to it. Laying in the foundation for these trees that is really all I'm going to focus on. But if you're kind of new to plein air painting, this is um, this would be just a standard way of how I um, begin a plein air, especially a forest scene when you have a lot of complexity to it. Um, so. Um, you guys can see. I hope everything's all clear. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Linda. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, now a little bit on the forest floor here, and then I'm gonna, th when I do these forest scenes, I always get this background and even a little bit of the floor so that I have something to really anchor those trees down into place. Kind of 
kind of framing that in a little bit over here. I'm holding this in place because the this is kind of it's kind of a little bit bigger and so it kind of wiggles around. <laughs> All right. So again, I'm just keeping my paint really thin and I'm just going to show how I push and pull that soft um, maneuvering. If you saw that horse on my Facebook page, this is basically how I did it. I started with a toned canvas and I kept my paint really thin and I kept the values um, just really subtle and in a really close relationship to each other. And like that. All right, now I'm going to get a smaller brush. This is a um, size 2 filbert and I'm gonna use some turpentine. Really, at this point, I'm just gonna draw in where the trees are gonna go. Starting with just a few that I'm gonna highlight here. I'm not gonna do them all, and if you're just joining, I'll show you again. Um, this is the scene, and I'm doing that side of the trail over there, mostly. Okay, you can see that. I hope everything works. All right, let me kinda, I'm gonna stand a little bit over like this. And so when I do these trees, I'm always looking for little pieces of character in um, the twists and turns. And if you can see, um, I just drag and pull. Looking closely at this one tree, even though it's a skinny little tree, there's a lot of character in this trunk. Um, and I just love finding all these twists and turns like that. See, it's kind of like at a slight angle. Uh, I find that I enjoy that love to watch you paint. Thank you, Polly. Good to see you. Yeah, t-shirt. I hope their music isn't too loud. <laughs> I did a couple of test videos and I hope that it was acceptable, but it is what it is. So I'm doing the tree right next to it now, looking at way that that falls and I twist my brush this way pushing down hard on it and I'm gonna lift off a little and I might twist just letting it fall by lifting and releasing the pressure it lightens the value um, and I'm looking at it as it comes down that way. <laughs> Hi Cherise! <laughs> Alright, so that, I'm happy with that tree. What I'm going to do now is just kind of um, get some of these branches. I'm not going to at this point fill in all of this passage with all those trees back there. I did that on the other example and like I said I will switch paintings here in a little while and work on some of those finer details of doing trees. I'll just get this little guy over here. You want to stagger where the bottoms of the trees land. Oh, and I have a tendency to do this. So I have to um, maybe, maybe I'll pull this one over a little and make it smaller and further back there. I think that might be interesting that way. It's, a, it's, it's funny, the, the little things that we do that um, we sort of have that, I always make my branches like, J -j -j -j. <laughs> just knowing your weaknesses helps you to uh, make adjustments. I've had little squirrels and little birds. I had a bird land right on this tripod. It was really a little chickadee. It was so cute. When you're really still and quiet in the forest, it's just... Little squirrels come running around. I think that I, the forest is one of my most favorite places to be. I grew up in Minnesota in the Sand Dunes State Forest and um, I was about six years old and I learned how to saddle my pony and I'd go off riding into the woods. And it was not uncommon for her to go home without me. <laughs> But, uh, you know, you learn to stay on, and uh, I think I was probably about 10 or so when I figured out that packing um, 
<laughs> my, my backpack full of watercolors and my jar of water and um, some carrots so I could take my horse out. It was so fun. I take my horse out and I um, ride out into the woods and um, I tied him up to a tree. We had an overlook trail that went way up above a valley and um, I tie him up and I'd sit down with my backpack and I'd do a watercolor of the valley. That was my first plein air experience. <laughs> I didn't really know what I was doing was called plein air, but um, you know, it's those little little things in our life. Stop watching you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, um, Lois. <laughs> nice to have you guys with. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of squiggling and dragging. Oh, do you see what I just did? <laughs> I don't know if you can see that, but I have two branch things going like like that. So I'm just gonna kind of adjust and tweak that as I go without adjusting too many things. Bringing this down. I think it was Lily who was asking about um, how I do that push and pull thing with the erasing and the pulling things out. So what I would do then, um, you know, on this or if this was a horse or whatever, I clean my brush off and um, gonna just sort of rub out where I want a lighter tone, like that. And I also brought, you can use Q-tips. Q-tips are a great little um, tool. I take a palette knife and I can dip my Q-tip in um, Gamsol. And I'm holding my palette knife right here because I don't want the Gamsol to go in the background. So I'm gonna hold this right here and just sort of rub out some of that, um, oops, some of that paint, like that. Just to pull that um, pigment off. And I don't wanna just go all the way down because the light is not consistently um, bright all the way down a tree trunk. It, it varies, some places you have it more intense and some it's not as much. If you can see that, I hope my hand doesn't cover it much so and that's basically how I do that wiping out um, hey Abby <laughs> that's basically how I do that wiping out method and then you just alter how much pigment you have on your brush for lighter values and, um, it's a really it's a delicate balance but it really makes beautiful effects it's not quite Grisai Grisai is more like a painting in black and white where this is uh, just a tonal wash where you take and you erase. And some people use rags. You can um, take your brush like this and your paper towel on the end of your brush and wipe out um, little smaller things like that into it. I don't know if you can see that, but or you can just scratch it with your palette knife. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. How are you? Good. It's like How a long perfect have you been day. Out here? Uh, a couple hours. I mean, right. not working on just this one, but All other right, stuff cool. too. <laughs> Thanks. Have a good cool. day. You too. Is that a time lapse video of yourself too? Um, it's Facebook Live. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Friendly people. Everybody's out today. I'm going to also uh, work on erasing a little bit on this one. It's so nice to hear people out. It's a beautiful day. I can't believe it's February. I think because this tree is so little, I'm going to take and do this thing, this little technique with, that I was just showing, where I'm just going to take a little paper towel and wipe that out. alter and vary my line a little. Kind of liking that effect. If you can see that, I'll pull it in a little bit so you can see. Uh, yeah, you can see. But anyway, it's kind of a fun little thing to do. Softening that because I don't like the stark, stark line. Just 
So I'm gonna keep that a little less intense there. This. And this um, technique works much better on linen. Oh, hi Sarah, that's okay. I, I've done, I, when I was here earlier and was working on my other little paintings, I was just doing those on gessoed panels. And because the gesso is acrylic, it's very, very absorbent. And so I couldn't get this really nice wipeout feeling uh, that you can on linen. All right, so moving on, I'm gonna do some trees on that side of the trail. Starting at the top. I kind of like my trees to have a slight leaning in together. I think it has a, kind of a, an interesting embracing quality. Looking at some of those over there, these branches, how they do their little thing. All the way down, pressing hard there. And again, I'm watching where all of them land because I don't want them all in line with each other. Norm had asked about the technique of um, short stroke or um, I don't I'm not really sure what a short stroke technique is in fact early in my um, art training I kind of abandoned the whole idea of um, this technique or that technique and I decided to just find my own thing um, I did study at the atelier and um, I really don't remember them talking much about a technique called the short stroke. Maybe you're meaning like an impressionistic like that. And um, for that, sometimes I do, I basically just do whatever the passage requires. So if it needs um, shorter brush strokes, then I will. But if it requires something a little more um, smooth or whatever, you just have to, you just have to adjust and make it work however this requires. I remember my art teacher used to say, if you have to paint with your elbow, just do it. Get it on the canvas. Um, so, uh, and you had also said something about blending. Um, when I make an effort to blend something, I never want to do this. To blend, you know, blending this into that, and that into that. To me, I think that that ends up looking uh, overworked and it, it loses the beauty, beautiful paint quality. And when I paint uh, for the effort of something to be blended, I will lay down a piece of color and then get another piece of color and lay it next to that. And I might take and just squiggle a little bit, but not too much because I like the to see the integrity of the brushwork and the beauty of the color. And so if you blend it, it can really muddy that. And, I try not to do that as much. So. I hope that that answered your question. All right. Um, one thing I noticed that I have also a tendency is you have to really watch and be careful that the distance of your trees don't match the distance to the edge. I once made a tree and it was like an inch wide, and then it was about an inch gap to the edge. So you just have to be cognizant of, um, of you know, your distance and shapes. That is what I mentioned, what you just stated, yes. Okay, good, thank you. Um, and as these trees recede in the distance, they get lighter in value. So I'm just gonna use maybe a little bit more turpentine or gamsol and go, a little softer with my pressure on the brush. Just adding a few in there. Just to just to make it feel like it kind of recedes back in the distance. <laughs> I'm trying to keep an eye on my watch, um, but I noticed today it's it's not keeping the right time, so. I don't know, I have excellent battery on my phone and I think that I'm just gonna kinda go with the fuzzies here and hope you guys enjoy it and get something out of it, it's kinda fun. 
but I would like to work on um, sort of dispelling or taking away some of that intimidation of going into the forest and painting a forest scene because you can look at that and just be overwhelmed with all the trees and the values and the light and the sky and the birds and everything. Um, but just to, just to get out there and take it and break it down into pieces. As you saw, I had already a toned canvas, laid down a few values, sketched out my little path, and then just started laying down the trees. And that's, that's just basically, just work on it in little bits. So I'm just gonna take and drag some of these shadows across this path to create that illusion of sunlight in here and over here. Um, when you're doing this this method of just sort of wiping out, you don't have a lot of um, you don't have a lot of paint quality, so that's really not something that I'm focusing on with this particular painting. Is um, you know beautiful brushstrokes of the like thick paint or whatever, so keeping it real soft. All right, now um, I'd mentioned earlier about light wrapping around little sticks and twigs as they go up towards the sun. So up here, I have this passage where it's the sky, and I have my branches, so I'm squinting down at those trees way up there, and I'm seeing just these fuzzy little things at the end of these sticks. So I'm taking a little tiny brush, I'm gonna get some nice um, turp gamsol on it, and, and I'm taking gray, just a gray mixture here, and I'm gonna finish out some of these branches, just really soft and subtle, nothing, um, not going to get them too dark, but I want to keep those that area up there really atmospheric. Um, if you're just joining, um, yeah, I the, the houses around here have music, <laughs> so oh well. I'm just keeping these soft. Don't want to add too many. I'm, I'm really only just trying to pick out a few significant ones that help tell a story. If you get overwhelmed and you want to put, you know, 900 branches and it's not gonna, it's not gonna look or even read accurate. Um, so just select and when I get down to these lower values down here where it's, um, yes, I, I have great cell reception. When you get down to here, Instead of using black on the branches, I mean, you still can, but vary it and get a little bit more um, lighter value tone in there. So I'm taking a thinner wash of white, a little yellow ochre to warm it up a bit, and um, some of that darker tone that's on there. So it's a really soft, light gray. And if you add um, your branches down here, which I don't think you can see that on the video, I'll make it a little bit brighter so you can see it, hopefully. The branches will show up white whiter um, because you have a darker value back here. So I'm gonna, gonna branch that around like that. And I don't want to get these um, really super fine lines with these brushes because I I think it loses something when it, you start getting fussy details. So I'm gonna go back through with up here now and just um, kind of ch -ch -ch in some branch, leafy, twiggy, tiny, twiggy things up there where um, it's just suggested. And I just kind of use that as a mass. So when I squint down at those, at the end of these branches, I see sort of a scratchy ch -ch -ch thing like that. And this, this can quickly get out of hand, so you just want to do a little bit of it. And at the same time, I'm kind of losing some of these stark lines that went off the canvas. Because anything like that can really draw your eye right off. And I am doing these little twiggy things before I get into the highlight, because I'll add the highlight in between and around. I can also take, while I'm doing this, and kind of fudge over some passages where my brush strokes weren't really great. better. Maybe a little 
little bit over here. The last uh, plein air forest painting that I did was at the Sagamore Hill plein air competition over in Oyster Bay. And it was so beautiful. The woods were all beautiful green. And um, it just was stunning to just be in the woods. I was so happy out there. Another time I did a forest uh, scene, I was at the Frank Serrano workshop in the Sierra Nevadas. And um, interesting thing happened. I was in there and they were all uh, yellow golden aspens. It was beautiful. If you have an opportunity to take his workshop, you should. It's a gorgeous location. Mountains and all. Um, so I was in this yellow forest and I was working on my forest scene. And um, when, I, when I took my painting out of that lighting and I looked at it, it was overwhelmingly blue because I'd compensated. I believe you know what I guess. Um, great, Polly. Uh, okay, good. Um, so anyway, I, I, my painting was overwhelmingly blue, and um, it's because I'd compensated for all that yellow. And you just have to be aware that when you're painting in something, and the canopy is a specific shade, like that green canopy at the um, Sagamore Hill competition I was doing. I, I knew that my propensity was going to be to paint it too reddish. So you just have to kind of watch out for that and make adjustments. Okay, so I'm feeling like that's good. If I were to do any more up there, I think it would get muddy and I don't want, I don't want to see it starting to get cluttered. Uh, now I'm going to just add the highlights to the trunks. And I'm seeing that there's some bright ones back in here. So I'll just kind of wipe those out like that. Kind of roll it. You can just roll your paper towel into a point. Go like that. Okay, good enough. Back up. Oh, just so you know, too, these all these paintings that I do are available on my website at um, JessicaHenryFineArt.com. In fact, all of these little sketches and things that I did today I'll put up because I think they're just kind of fun little things. The little ones I'll just do for like 50 bucks, no big deal. So I've got uh, just, my brush is clean. I just took Gamsol and I'm wiping out some of these passages here. If you get too much of the Gamsol on there, you can just wipe it off and then you get that effect that you're looking for with that light hitting the trunk. So, oh, thanks. Thanks, Danny. <laughs> okay, I took out too much, so I'll add that back in. This is what I love about oil paintings is it's so forgiving. Um, a lot of people think that like acrylics are easier because it's, um, <laughs> Explain your technique. Oh, thank you, Philip. Good to see you. Oh, is this Victor? <laughs> um, anyway, thanks so much. As far as acrylics go, um, I, I don't find that they're easier uh, I, because I think that they're very, you, you're very committed with everything you lay down. They dry very quickly and it just makes it a little bit more of a challenge. So again, I'm just kind of alternating my um, my highlights because I don't want a solid all the way down because you've got other branches and other trees casting shadows like that. Just to vary it. Now, for the fun, I'm going to just take some paint and just kind of lay it on a little bit. With the same brush, this is still my size two, just going to take some white and some yellow ochre because it warms it. And when I look over there, that's basically the color I, I see here. I'll show you real quick again. Um, just taking bits and pieces of this tree and that tree over there just to try to kind of put together a sample run. <laughs> and um, so I alternate these highlights too with warm and cool. Looking at some of these that are uh, up close Pulling that down. 
into here. Same thing with this side. I think I'm going to add some cool. Some of these trees, because of their species, their the bark has more of a bluey tone, and some of them have more of a ochre tone. So it's fun just to have a little bit of that variation in your painting. It makes it interesting. And I think I'll scoop up some here. I think I have Tom Petty now. <laughs> doesn't doesn't every forest sound have have Tom Petty in the background? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I don't know if you guys can hear it. Okay, so I think that for this uh, sample here, I'm gonna uh, put this one down, and I'll get my other one and show you a little bit more of how I might push it. And when you take your cake out of the oven and you're ready to frost it. <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna do on this little sample is kind of just show you how I might push and pull some of the thicker paint pieces. And where'd my brush go? So I'm looking ahead, seeing what I need to do on this one. I want the view, the perspective to be, if you can see that, right in this area where I think it's really rich and I love these, um, the tree trunks here and this glow that was happening in here. So I'm going to focus on that. I think we're doing good for time. I'm taking white and yellow ochre and a little bit of cad yellow pale. And I'm pretty sure it's kind of picking up some grays and things that are under the, the mixture there. And I just want some pure, clean pieces of paint um, just laid down in this area. Whenever you have an area that you really want the eye to go to, you want to use those richer uh, brush strokes, more color. It just gives more impact to that passage. And you're telling the viewer, look here, don't look anywhere else. Leading the eye this way, like leading the witness. <laughs> Think this way. Nuts. I think that that's sufficient, more or less, for that passage. Remember, too, if you guys don't want to see the comments, you can just swipe them off to the right. So I, I think that that's okay. I worked on some of the shadows and I just used a soft purple for those. Um, just alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue. So this tree, I don't think it has as much of an impact as I want it to, so I'm going to push that a little harder. And I can really see these intense spots of value where behind it is darker and that makes it jump out more. So I have to be aware, do I want the eye to go off the canvas, even though I see it's highlighted way up at the top? I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to keep everything right in here. Like that. Hmm. Yeah, and this one is a little bit bluer, so I'm going to... Uh, just a touch of the ultramarine blue to my mixture that I'm already using. I hope that that last demo helped with um, showing how to wipe out, because that's all I did with that horse one. Have to run. Oh, thanks, Polly. You can always watch these later if you go to my Facebook page, um, posting your plein air. Yes, that's what I was just gonna say. If you post, if you go to my Facebook page, the videos stay up, and if you can't find them there, just on there. Go to photos and click on my little button that says photos, scroll across to albums, and in albums is are all the videos, like hours of videos that you could watch. Thanks, Polly, thanks for joining. Alright, so um, I'm finding that that's kind of fun and I enjoy that. So I'm gonna go and work on this great big tree. I wanted to have one big tree in here so that I could kind of show you how I might use um, my brush hooks using horizontal strokes across a large format like this. 
And um, looking at that, I see that this tree is mostly uh, kind of in bluish tones. So I'm going to lay down using the strokes going across like that. I hope that you can see that my hand doesn't block that. And then I kind of let some of it scumble because it's a tree and it has bark. I'm taking ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, a little bit of white and ochre, and letting that just play down the side over here. Yeah, I like that. And how it comes down. The roots have this um, bumpy thing going on. Oh, it's so peaceful out here. I could be out here all day. I just may. <laughs> so that, that's starting to feel, I think, like a little bit like tree bark. <laughs> Thanks, Polly. Um, so as you're observing your trees, just notice too where you might see passages where it's cooler, bluer tones, and other passages where it's going to be warmer tones, like right in through here, like that, and then um, kind of just letting that scumble. So I'll add it, make it a little bit warmer on the sunlit side and then a little cooler on the shadow side. And then um, I'm just going to add some branches as they come in and out of this a little bit here. I think I'll just stick with the same brush. And I'm um, going to get into some of that Gamsol because the oil, when I use oil to try to do little tiny uh, branches, it, um, it just kind of makes it, I don't know, you just have to experiment. I, d I don't really care for that effect. So I just stick with a little bit of Gamsol because I can get the right consistency. Um, playing with some of this. This tree over here has sort of a grapevine wrapping around it, so I might kind of play with some of that. <laughs> I like that. Let me get this. This needs a big branch. I think I'm going to make it go like this and cut right across everybody. And pull up like that. Just looking at the way that the light hits this. Like that. And I don't want to. I don't want to draw the eye straight off the canvas, so I'm just going to kind of let that act as a barrier to keep us down here. So again, just trying to keep the focus down here. I'm going to just put a little bit thicker, warmer paint on this side of the tree trunk to keep the focus in this area. It's super easy to just overwork it. Don't wanna, don't wanna um, kill it. <laughs> All right, and then so if I have this much light hitting the trunk of the tree, then right at the base, I'm gonna put some of that intense bright light just to make it look like it's, it seems appropriate uh, right in through here. Adding a little bit of burnt sienna because there are a bunch of leaves on the ground that yeah see I think that that does a nice uh, little lead in that way and um, <laughs> I'm getting rid of that I don't like how that branch looks all right well 
I think that that kind of um, pretty much wraps it up. I hope that this has been enjoyable. And again, um, if you are interested in any of these, I'm going to put them up on my website. Um, yeah, even especially this one. I, I think that this one was more exemplary of showing that method of the, um, the technique that some people are asking about, rubbing it in and pushing it out and just like a tonalist study. All right. Thanks so much, you guys. Have a good day. I hope you guys get out and paint. All right, bye-bye.